welcome back to another season of the Virtual Ninja Show. We received a lot of feedback of content that you are looking for, and here we'll see that we have a lot of it in the upcoming episodes. If you haven't looked at what's coming, go to aka.ms slash ninja show. Today, we are starting the new season with OFER, and we are talking about MTO, which is an abbreviation. But Ofer will explain everything about it. So Ofer, please introduce yourself quickly and then also what we're going to talk about. Hey, everyone. My name is Ofer. Um, I'm leading everything multi-tenancy organization and multi-tenancy support um, in Defender XDR. So multi-tenant organization, which is... Explain a little bit. It, I, I think multi-tenant, so there is either an MSSP or an organization that have multiple tenants of our Defender XDR. And what do they want to do with this with multiple tenants? And what is your feature about? <laughs> Very good question. So the thing is that up until now, um, we were focused on securing a single tenant, both SOC experience, security admin, our boundaries were all about a single tenant. However, we know that in the real life, there are more archetypes, more architectures than a single tenant. You can think of, you mentioned MSSPs, right? They're managing multiple customers, multiple distinct tenants. They might want to take action on simultaneously. They might want to be able to see their posture. They might want to be able to um, seek for threats. That's what we're providing. Besides MSSPs, we also have those the large complex organizations of the world, right? Sometimes they merge and acquire with different companies. You can think of Microsoft and Blizzard. What? Right? What happens when we acquire them and we need to manage their security and their IT? Um, what happens if Microsoft, for instance, has a presence in multiple ge geographical um, locations, right? We have subsidiaries in North America. We have subsidiaries in Europe. We have in the Middle East. So you might want to create different tenants for that exact reason for data boundaries. That's our target audience. Now, what we're building is a way to manage the security operations in one place. Okay, so as of today, if I'm not mistaken, like an MSSP, for instance, they can switch between tenants and without, but they need to sign out and sign in, or how is that? Like, I remember there's a drop down if you have multiple tenants that you care about or that you manage, you can do this. So now what you are talking about is something different. Not entirely. The ability to switch tenant actually is something we created as part of the MTO support movement. First, we introduced a way to switch between different tenants without the need to open a new tab, sign in and out. So you, whenever you want to switch into a different tenant and to do anything, you can go to that component and switch between tenant. So the news now that we released a couple of weeks ago is now that, of course, you can still switch, but now you can apply, let's say, settings or a configuration or like something to multiple tenants without the need to go into each of them and then say, at this, at this, at this. Exactly. So that's the oh. challenge MTO is facing. So besides just moving between the single tenant instances, we are bringing you a new approach, a new portal, allowing you to see data from multiple tenants at the very same time. Um, while keeping everything in place, we are not moving any data. So everything in North America remains there. And we only give you the way to consume information from a single pane. Now, setting management is a pain. Content management is a pain. First, we are focused on everything SOC operations. Make your mm -hmm. SOC efficient. How do you triage incidents across multiple talents? How do you try and alerts across multiple talents? How do you threat? hunt across multiple tenants, that's the sort of issues we are solving now. Mm -hmm. um, but our kingdom is everything multi-tenant. Okay, so is there anything that someone needs to download or install or I don't know, how do they get access to that? You call it dashboard, the MTO dashboard. You don't need any special license. Everything you need to do is well, either going to mto.security.microsoft.com. Everything is there. 
or you can just simply click on the tenant switcher. You have an option there for the multi-tenant management, and then you can access MTO. Now, the only thing you do need is accessing multiple tenants at the same time, having a single user with those permission to see data from multiple tenants. So how do you do that? <laughs> Good question. Um, you have basically two options. If you are a CSP partner of Microsoft, you can use a protocol named GDAP. It allows you for scalable management of your access into your um, customer tenants. We support that. The second way, if you are not a CSP partner of Microsoft, is using what we call B2B, the mm -hmm. Entra ID, Business to Business Connection. You can achieve that multiple ways. You can use access packages that are the capability of Entra ID. You can manually invite external collaborators from additional organization into your organization, or you can set up tenant to tenant sync, which is a capability allowing you, again, scalably manage those invites um, and managing the permission of those external collaborators. Okay, offer. So we talked for a while now, and I think I'm eager to see it. So can we maybe show what we just talked about, like signing in to the MTO thingy? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, so the cool thing about MTO, it's integrated into Defender, right? So the only thing you or your SOC analyst have to do is to log into a single tenant, click that tenant switcher you see here. There is a small arrow and the multi-tenant management will appear. Whenever you click on that, you will be able to see this welcome flow of MTO. That's the MTO portal. Oh, okay. Here you can select the different tenants you have access for and combine them in a single pane, seeing all the data in one place. After choosing that, the portal will refresh, all the applicable experience will show up. So you can start and seeing, for instance, all the incidents that you have across all the tenants in the same well-known incident experience. Wow. Before we continue there, help me understand. You said you clicked on add tenants, and then you said something like all the tenants we have access to, how does they know how you have, why you have access to that? Like, where is the data coming from? Everything is dynamic. So whenever someone invites Heike into another tenant, he, he's doing that in Enter ID. Basically what we are doing whenever you are logging into the portal, we're asking Enter ID, please give us all the tenants that Heike has access for. So we're getting that list of tenants and presenting it to so, and then, of course, you can always go back and then remove tenants and add the ones that, wow, okay, got it. This is new, right? So before, of course, in the portal themselves, you could switch between the tenants and then you could, you can always, you can still do this, but then you can basically have a view of that one tenant and have a, can configure something in that tenant. So now the multi-tenant view is you see all the incidents. I want to see that. I want to see that. So you see all the tenants and you see the tenant name. Wow. Okay. Got it. That's it. It's the same incident experience everyone are familiar with, just with one additional dimension. That's the tenant name. And you can see it here. And if I had a very good demo, you could see many, many tenants here as we support up to 50 tenants simultaneously. Okay, so this is um, 50 tenants as of now, um, because we work with our design partners. This is a good number for most of them to, to have right now? Basically, yes. Okay. So I see we have the incidents with a tenant name. I, th I, I would assume for the alerts, it's pretty much the same. Alert list and then tenant ID as well, or tenant name. And then hunting. So what can people hunt for now across the different tenants? Like what are examples? Tell me about it. So actually they can hunt for whatever they like. I mean, we allow them to execute a single query across multiple tenants at the same time. And we are just unifying all the results into um, the hunting pane. So it is nothing new about it. You can just run queries and get all the information that one without the need to go into each and every other tenant. So it saves your time. So, okay, and if you go there now for the hunting query, can you, whilst you create the query, it is automatically going across the different tenants or do you have to specify which tenants you want this query to run on? So you can specify whatever you like. You chose at first the 
list of tenants that you want to have visibility into. In advanced hunting, you can select all of those tenants or just a subset. Okay, wow. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go hunt. I see their tenant scope all in unified yeah. view. Those are two right now, and you could probably change it there. Exactly. So the tenant scope, here, that's the part allowing you wow. to specify the exact scope of the queries you're executing. Um, and then you can simply run a query. And just like the incident experience, you will see here a prefix, a dimension of the tenant ID this answer came from, and all the information that you wanted to see and you would normally see in advanced hunting. This is so cool. Wow, and you can even write custom detection rules? Yes, you can see all the different custom detections you have across all the different tenants. So, and you can manage them, you can remove them, you can add them directly from MTO. Again, without the need to move into the specific tent. This is so cool. Okay, offer. this is exciting. So, and then for the devices, it's also like a full list of all the devices or do you, how, how does it look like? I think I've never seen that tenant uh, in the navigation bar. What is that doing? Yeah, so here you can see a negative view of all the different devices you have across of all different tenants, just aggregated on a tenant level. So you can see how many high-risk devices you have in each and every other tenant, how many um, high exposure, how many machines in total. So you can see everything from this single pane of glass. Wow. Wow. And you see also how it can be onboarded at high risk, high exposure, which brings me to the next one, which is vulnerability management. Wow, again, you have the tenant view and the dashboard view that gives you everything across the tenants you selected. Exactly, so two capabilities here. One is the Defender Vulnerability Management Dashboard in MTO. In here you can see, again, all the different tenants, their exposure score, their drift over the last 30 days. So if something happened open overnight, you can open the screen Look at it and see, you know what? My exposure score dramatically increased over the last 30 days. We need to take care of Contos Hotels. Wow. And a bunch of other metrics. The other thing that we have is a tenant level aggregation. So you can see again, all the different tenants that you have just in a more prettier view, you can call it. So, and then I think at the very beginning, you wanted to go to the settings. Is there anything that you can configure? I have a lot of questions around the configuration, but I first let you go. Yeah, so whenever you chose the first set of tenants, maybe you want to change it, right? Maybe you got a new tenant added and you want to see it. So the way for adding a new tenant to the view is via the settings. Here is the place you can see mm -hmm. all the different tenants that you have. You can add additional tenants if you haven't done so, um, or you can remove them. Okay. So, Ofer, I know there is also multi-tenancy in other parts of the Microsoft uh, universe. Um so if they configured multi-tenancy there, is there something that bring, comes down to your multi-tenants, like something yes. that you're leveraging? Good question. If you configure MTO and you configure a bunch of tenants configured together, so for start, you can do everything in Teams and SharePoint. And as well, you can use Defender MTO to manage the security of your tenant. It's not a mandatory requirement. You can manually invite users. You can use GDAP as we talked before. But if you did that, you will be able to use MTO without any further requirement. That's very cool. So is there any other requirements for permissions? Like, you know, uh, usually we have also now unified RBAC or like how does RBAC play into this game? Is there something they need to do or... Yeah, so we respect everything, okay? You could have security admin across one tenant and the security operator across the second tenant, and you could have a customized Arbor crawl on the third. We don't care. As long as you are able to perform a specific action, let's call it uh, um, close an incident on one tenant, you will be able to do it in MTO. If you don't, so you won't be able to use it in MTO. MTO respects everything role-based access control or any global role within the different tenants. Again, they all remained completely independent. We don't allow any elevation of privileges. 
We are just giving you that single pane of glass without the need to open multiple ten, uh, tabs. Wow. So. Okay. So if someone doesn't have permissions in, let's say, email and collaboration in one tenant and you run an advanced hunting query about something emailed, you would not get the results from that one tenant where you don't have permissions to access those tables. Exactly. Advanced hunting will give you only the information you have access to. Okay, you really thought it through, right? <laughs> I, it took us quite a while. Yes, I mean, it's been a while, Offer. You know, um, I remember that this was a big ask for a very long time. And um, I know there were like other priorities and we did other things for multi-tenancy, but this is huge. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, how is the feedback? Like you work with customers and uh, how is how, how are they liking it? Honestly, there are two sources of feedback. One is, oh, this is amazing. I can hit the trash incident across multiple tents. And the second is, oh, wait, I have this list of 100 items we need in MTO tomorrow. Um, But, you know, this is, I mean, we always keep working and there will always be improvements in new things coming. So, Ofer, I know this is probably also a, a bigger question, but maybe can you share a little bit best practices on how MSSPs or larger organizations should deal with these multiple multiple tenants with permissions and uh, granting account access and these kind of things. Yeah, sure. If you're a large organization and you need to grant your global SOC with access to multiple tenants, the most scalable way is to combine two things. First, use tenant-to-tenant -tenant sync so you can provision your users across multiple tenants. That's a capability of Enter ID. Afterwards, You can use a combination of that with entitlement management. Again, yet another capability of Enter ID. So you can define a group of people, let's say the third tier of your SOC, and grant them automatically or with PIM um, a way to get their security admin, security operator rights. So combining both capabilities, you can scalably provision your SOC across multiple tenants and then... With a click of a button, they can switch tenants, see them in MTO and do whatever they like. Good. I think we talked a lot and we showed a lot and I think it's super exciting. And I know there is, of course, new things will come along the road. Um, you didn't stop working now just because you released the dashboard, right? Um, and yeah, so Ofer, thank you very, very much for being my expert on today's show. And for everyone out there, so if you haven't, go to aka.ms slash ninja show, check out the upcoming episodes, add them to your calendar so you get a reminder. And of course, you can also go back um, and watch previous episodes if you couldn't join us during our live stream. Don't forget to add your um, questions or some wishes for upcoming episodes also in the comments. And yeah. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode and see you soon. Thank you. Bye.